Hi, it's Mitch from Mobile Edge, and today I'm going to talk to you about the differences in power amplifiers for cars, and more specifically about the power ratings that manufacturers print on their, on their owner's manuals, on the boxes, and on the amplifiers themselves. They're not always accurate, and that's one of the problems in our industry, is that there's no governing body that says you have to prove your power output, and whatever it actually puts out is what you have to print on your literature and on the amplifier itself, they can print anything they want. And even the good manufacturers can print anything that they want on, on their product. Uh, we're going to actually test a couple of amplifiers. We're going to use great quality test equipment and, and all the right tools that are necessary to do that. And we're going to show you exactly what a couple of amplifiers produce, uh, along with what their claims are of what they produce. So with all that being said, uh, let's dig in and I'll, I'll show you exactly what these tools are that we're going to use and then we'll proceed with all the tests. This is the equipment that we use to perform the tests. It starts out with a high current 50 amp power supply. The main purpose of this power supply is to keep a large 1000 cold cranking amp battery charged. Uh, that's it right there. That supplies all the current that the amplifier needs during the test. The TPI-440 oscilloscope is going to measure distortion levels and show us when it distorts. Of course, our handy Ohm's Law pie chart and a good quality head unit, along with a, a Fluke DVM and a source of test tones. This is a, a dummy bank, a dummy load bank that presents a load to the amplifier. So it kind of simulates the speaker. Uh, doesn't exactly simulate the speaker, but it gets it pretty darn close. Uh, these are the amps that we're going to test today, uh, a 2000 watt BOSS amplifier along with a Memphis uh, PR1X1000 amp. The, uh, the Memphis amplifier is said to produce 1000 watts and we're going to test that and see exactly where everything plays out. This is our resistor dummy load bank that we have. Can't really read it, but uh, they are 4 ohm 100 watt resistors. There's a total of 16 of them that I have wired into different banks. The idea is to be able to present a 1, a 2, or a 4 ohm load back to the amplifier to somewhat simulate a speaker. Um, it's not a perfect test, but it, it gets you a lot more in the ballpark by doing it this way. In this case, we have it wired up to a 1 ohm load to present to our Memphis PRX1000 amplifier. If you can see, we have the, the subsonic filter set all the way down. We have the uh, crossover point set to around 100. And we're going to play a 40 hertz test tone into it. Everything's wired up. Uh, I have the, uh, the meter wired in, the oscilloscope wired in there on the parallel output. And if you, if you see, we have a, a good solid power supply going to it right now. I'm testing the, the voltage. We've got 13.61 volts going to the amplifier. And now what we'll do is while playing the 40 hertz test tone, we're going to slowly turn up the output on the amplifier, the gain control on the amplifier. And what we're going to watch for, you can see it's playing 39.99 hertz or, or 40 hertz. We're going to watch for the curve to get all distorted. Uh, you'll start to see it square out along the top. It'll start to look a little bit different. And then we're going to back it off until it's a good, clean input signal, or output signal, I should say, and read the voltage. So we'll just keep turning it up a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. And you'll start to see a little bit of, of clipping. And then we, we back it off uh, a little bit. That's uh, a lot of clipping right there. You can see the waveforms chopped off. And right about right about there, uh, we've got a good clean signal. So that's our voltage. Uh, 34.9 volts is what that amplifier is able to swing. So if you look at the Ohm's Law pie chart, you see that in order to determine power when you know volts and resistance, it's volts squared divided by the resistance. In this case, 34.9 times 34.9 divided by 1. That'll tell you the output. This particular amplifier is able to put out 1,218 watts of good, clean power. So now we're going to test the BOSS amplifier, which is able to play, according to the website, into a 2-ohm load. So we modified our resistor bank a bit. And we have it set up to now uh, present a 2 ohm load 
to the amplifier for our test. Here's the Boss uh, CX2000M, uh, 2000 watt amplifier or so it says. We're going to test it now and see exactly what it's able to produce. Uh, you can see we have all of the uh, settings about the same as we did on the Memphis amplifier. We have the crossover settings the same. Um, we have the alligator clips for the oscilloscope onto the speaker outputs. And we'll do the same exact test. Uh, we have the CD104 40 hertz test tone being played. And we'll tie all that in. Right now, of course, we'll, we'll check the voltage. We're at 13.48 volts. It's within a tenth of a volt of what we had before. Um, start testing the, uh, the amplifier the same exact way. We'll turn it the uh, gain all the way down. And then slowly start turning it up until we see a distortion or a, a clipping on the oscilloscope. So right now you can see 39.99 hertz, 40 hertz test tone. And we're turning it up. You see the waveform change a little bit. And here we see it start to clip slightly. So we'll crank it back down a bit. And it, there you can see it really clipped. We'll end up right around 25 now wait for the uh, track to cycle now hold on a second and right there you have it about 25.12 volts this is able to swing and still have a, a good clean output signal so using the same formula that we used before we take 25.11 volts squared and divide that total by the resistance, which was two ohms, and you come up with 315 watts of good clean power. So now we have all the testing complete, and what's real interesting is the Boss amplifier, the amplifier that has printed right on the outside of it, 2,000 watts. Same amplifier that the manufacturer states puts out 1,000 watts at two ohm. In reality, put out a little over 300 watts, less than one-third of what the manufacturer stated that the amplifier should produce and less than one-sixth of what is printed on the outside of it is what it actually produced in good clean undistorted power. The Memphis amplifier on the other hand made 20 percent more power than what the manufacturer states in its owner's manual. Instead of the 1,000 watts that it's supposed to put out, it put out, out over 1,200 watts of power. That's a really big difference, and yes, the Memphis amplifier is considerably more expensive than the Boss amplifier. But when you're putting together a good clean system, a good quality system, it's important to know what you're getting. And you don't always get what you want. The reason that a manufacturer puts some obnoxiously large number on the outside of an amplifier is for one reason only, and that's to sell product. Uh, when somebody's shopping and, and you know, isn't, so I would say educated in, in how audio works and they see 2,000 watts for $150, it's enticing and you don't always get what you pay for. It's always important to, to do your homework, do a little bit of research and you know, educate yourself a little bit more. The other thing that we didn't even talk about was the fusing on these amplifiers. The Memphis amplifiers fused at 120 amps of current. The Boss amplifiers fused at 50 amps. I'm not going to get into that in this particular video, but it's a perfect topic for one down the road. Uh, right there, that tells a huge story. So I hope I was able to, to help educate you a little bit more on selecting an amplifier and what makes one amplifier different, better, however you want to look at it, than another. Uh, with all that being said, my name is Mitch Schaefer from Mobile Edge in Lehighton, Pennsylvania. The website is www.mobileedgeonline.com. And if you're on Facebook or Twitter, be sure to look us up. You'll find us there also. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.